make a sharp 90-degree turn at sea. This is how China built Brunei's first cross-sea bridge. Today, China has undertaken countless overseas projects, and the specifications of the projects are getting higher and higher. China's infrastructure construction capabilities have long been recognized around the world. Brunei's first cross-sea bridge, the Polo Muara Bridge, is a classic example. This bridge built on a deserted island and swamp is not only the largest single-box, single-chamber box girder structure bridge in Asia, but it also made a sharp turn of nearly 90 degrees due to terrain constraints. This operation is uncommon worldwide. In this video, let us learn more about it. Brunei Darussalam is located in the northern part of Kalimantan Island, bordering the South China Sea to the north and Malaysia to the east, south and west. The total area is only 5,765 square kilometers and the population is 420,000, which is less than an ordinary sized county in China. Although Brunei is a very small country, it and its surrounding waters have large amounts of oil and natural gas resources. Brunei's annual oil production reaches 10 million tons. However, because Brunei has a small population, weak national strength, and its economy relies heavily on oil and gas development, infrastructure construction has always lagged behind. This has seriously hindered Brunei's economic development. In order to change its dependence on oil and gas resources and achieve sustainable development, Brunei has been actively seeking comprehensive national development and infrastructure construction. Looking around the world, it is Chinese companies that are most capable of helping Brunei in its construction. Demora Island is located at the outlet of Port Mora, with a total area of 955 hectares. Since 2003, the Brunei government has planned to develop Demuara Island as a key project for economic diversification, build infrastructure on the island, and transform it into a container terminal, petrochemical base, and export processing zone. However, due to the inconvenient transportation on the island, the development project of Damora Island has been stagnant for a long time. Employees who live in the center of Bandar Seri Bagawan, the capital of Brunei, go to work on Damora Island and must transfer to a ferry at a small pier in the suburbs. Living supplies on the island must also be transported back and forth by ferry, which brings great inconvenience to the work on the island day after day, and further development is impossible. This made people realize that a bridge must be built to connect the island and the land first, and then the development and utilization of the island can be discussed. The Damora Bridge is imminent. The Brunei Polo Muara Bridge project undertaken by China started construction on May 6, 2015, and was completed and opened to traffic in May 2018. Compared with other overseas engineering projects, the construction speed of this bridge is quite fast. It is 5.9 kilometers long, including a 2,680-meter-long bridge and a 3-kilometer-long island road, with a total investment of 1.2 billion renminbi. From the bridge project itself to all engineering machinery products including truck cranes, excavators, concrete mixers, pump trucks, etc., the entire Damora Island Bridge project can be said to have been contracted by Chinese companies. In addition to the two-way four-lane highway, the bridge is also equipped with electrical lines, communication lines and water supply pipelines from land to the island. It can be said that this bridge is the lifeline of Damora Island. Although China has extensive experience in maritime engineering, especially cross-sea bridges, the Brunei Polo Muara Bridge project still has its own unique difficulties. 
First of all, the Pulau Muara Bridge is the first bridge project in Brunei that China has undertaken, and it needs to be constructed using European standards and local Brunei standards. This is very different from China's construction standards and requires coordination and experience from many parties. In addition, the Damora Island Bridge project itself is a cash tender project of the Brunei government. During the construction process, we should try our best to cooperate with local enterprises in Brunei, and we should not let Chinese enterprises do everything for the sake of convenience. Brunei basically has no local industry and relies mainly on imported materials. Steel bars come from China, and cement, sand and gravel come from Malaysia. However, these raw materials must be purchased from local suppliers in Brunei and some secondary projects, such as earth and stone, water supply, power supply, etc., must also be subcontracted to local companies. The biggest limiting factor comes from the financial level. Due to limited project funds, the owner has limited the size of the entire structure and the general basic design to a boundary condition, and the structural model of the bridge has been severely restricted. This is reflected in technology, which is a great test of the construction level of the construction party. The 5.9-kilometer cross-sea bridge and island highway project is not large in scale. However, considering the high cost of overseas engineering projects, the construction cost of the Damora Island Bridge is only 1.2 billion yuan. So how can the bridge be built while ensuring quality? This requires the correct selection of the structural form of the bridge. In China, the more familiar cross-sea bridge models are suspension bridges or cable-stayed bridges. In order to ensure the navigation of tens of thousands of tons of ships, the span and height of the cross-sea bridge must be very high to prevent ships from colliding with the bridge. As a result, the main span of the bridge can easily reach thousands of meters. Only suspension bridges or cable-stayed bridges can withstand such spans. Both structural forms rely on steel cables outside the bridge deck for core stress. Although the construction cost is high due to rich engineering experience, the difficulty of construction is not high. The Pulau Muara Bridge in Brunei cannot adopt this mature but expensive structural form due to cost constraints. However, on the other hand, the Damora Island Bridge does not need to cross the main channel and it only needs to ensure the passage of ordinary ships under the bridge. Therefore, it is entirely possible to consider adopting a structural form with a smaller span. In the end, the bridge selected a continuous steel structure bridge with a single box and a single chamber box girder as the structural form of the bridge. The main bridge span of the bridge is 400 meters across four spans, the top width of the bridge deck is 23.6 meters, and the cross-sectional height is 4 to 7 meters. The single-box, single-chamber box girder structure used in the structure has set a record in Asia, including China, which has not yet achieved such a large single-box, single-chamber box girder structure. The box girder structure is a commonly used structural form for bridges with a small span. The main method of this structure is to make the main structure of the bridge into a hollow box shape in order to maximize the utilization of materials and significantly reduce the weight of the structure. It is a very scientific structural form. Moreover, when the width of the bridge deck is large, the box girder can also be divided into several areas longitudinally to form a box girder structure of a single box with two chambers or a single box with four chambers. However, box girder structures are usually used as prefabricated components for non-navigable sections with small spans. When the span of the bridge is extended to hundreds of meters, 
the simple box girder structure becomes somewhat difficult to support. Therefore, the Damora Island Bridge adopts a variable section box girder structure. Based on the possible stress curve of the bridge fitted by the computer, the most reasonable box girder section is designed accordingly. The closer to the bridge pier, the greater the height of the box girder, and in the middle of the bridge span, the box girder is the flattest. The thickness difference between the two is nearly double. The design and construction of variable section bridges test the technical level of the construction unit. However, with this approach, the forces on the bridge can be matched to the load-bearing capacity to the greatest extent possible. It can not only effectively carry the load, but also minimize the self-weight of the bridge and save costs. The unique design of the variable section beam also greatly enhances the beauty of the bridge. In addition, the single box single chamber box girder used in the project, although difficult to construct and install, reduces the lateral stress and the self-weight of the bridge, simplifies the stress on the bridge, and enhances the safety of the bridge. Compared with common suspension bridges and cable-stayed bridges, the Damora Island Bridge using variable section box girders is unique and has become a unique scenery on the South China Sea. The Polo Muara Bridge project in Brunei is the first project of China Communications Construction Company to enter the Brunei market. Its successful implementation is of great significance to the subsequent development of Brunei's transportation construction market. In the future, Brunei's engineering construction projects will increasingly choose to cooperate with Chinese companies. Not only does it help Brunei's economic development, but it also allows Chinese construction companies to set an example, establish a brand, and capture more overseas markets in the long term, forming a longer term profit mechanism. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.